Hi friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to uh, see this packet tracer activity, identify MAC and IP addresses. Hey, here is our objectives. Part 1, gather PDU information. In part 2, reflection questions. We will start with part 1, gather PDU information. Uh, the given a note here, uh, review the reflection questions in part 2 before proceeding with part 1. It will give you an idea of the types of information you will need to gather. Coming to part 2, here we can see all the reflection questions. It's almost 20 questions. So you can uh, go through uh, uh, all these uh, reflection questions. Uh, we will answer uh, all these questions after completing part 1. Coming to step 1, gather PDU information as a packet travels from 172.16.31.2 to 10.10.10.3. Coming to A, click 172.16.31.2 and open the command prompt, then enter the ping 10.10.10.3 command. Coming to our topology, here we can see the PC 172.16.31.2. We are going to ping from this PC to this laptop with IP address 10.10.10.3. Coming to our PC, we will go to desktop command prompt and here we will give the command ping to the laptop. Here is the IP address. Here we get the replies. So packets sent 4 are received 4 lost 0. 0% 0 loss. Now we will come to C. Switch to simulation mode and repeat the ping 10.10.10.3 command. A PDU appears next to 172.16.31.2. Okay, right. So we will move to simulation mode. Where is that? Then again, we will go to this PC 172.16.31.2 command prompt, and here we will give the same ping command. Here is that. Here we can see the PDU is appeared uh, on this uh, PC uh, 172.16.31.2. It's an ICMP type. Coming to D, click the PDU and note the following information from the outbound PDU layer tab. Okay, here we can see destination MAC address. So here is they given that. Then source MAC address, source IP address, destination IP address, then add device. Okay, so we will click on this uh, um, message. Then here we can see outbound PDU details. So we will click on this tab and here we can see the details. So destination MAC address. Here we can see that. It's correct. Also here we can see a source address. It's correct. Then source IP address. So here we can see that source IP address. Also we can see destination IP address. Then add to device computer. Oh, where is that? Anyways, here we can see add device in this uh, window itself. We can see add device and here they given the IP address. Okay, well, now we will go to E. You click capture or forward to move the PDU to the next device. Gather the same information from step 1D. Repeat this process until a PDU reaches its destination. Record the PDU information you gathered into a spreadsheet using a format like the table shown below. Here they are given all the information uh, for the ping from uh, this PC 172.16.31.2 uh, to this PC 10.10.10.3. This same information we copy to our uh, spreadsheet. Here we can see that. Now we will come to step 2, gather additional PDU information from other pings. Repeat the process in step 1 and gather the information for the following test. Here they are given a total 5 tests, so we will do that. Okay, here we can see all the PDU information of each pings. 
uh, here we can see a ping from uh, 10.10.10.3 to 10.10.10.2 here we can see the details here is for uh, ping from 172.16.31.3 272.16.31.2 and here we can see ping from 172.16.31.5 to 172.16.31.4 and here we can see ping from 10.10.10.2 to 172.16.31.4 And finally, here we can see ping from 10.10.10.2 to 172.16.31.3. And here we can see ping from 10.10.10.2 to 172.16.31.3. It's a really little bit boring uh, packet tracer activity, but still uh, we, uh, we can gain uh, some knowledge. So we will uh, go to part 2 reflection questions. Answer the following questions regarding the captured data. First one, were there different types of wires used to connect devices? Yes, obviously, because here uh, they used copper uh, as well as uh, fiber. Second one is, uh, did the wires change the handling of the PDU in any way? Obviously not. Uh, coming to three, did the hub lose any of the information uh, given to it? No. Uh, wh uh, what does the hub do with the MAC addresses and IP addresses? Uh, we know that the hub uh, will not do anything with the MAC addresses and IP addresses. So once this hub uh, get the message, uh, it just uh, broadcast the message. Uh, coming to the fifth one, uh, did the wireless access point do anything with the information given to it? Yes. So when we use access points, uh, it will uh, repackage uh, it as a wireless 802.11. Coming to a uh, sixth one, uh, was any MAC or IP address lost during the wireless transfer? No, uh, it's not. Uh, coming to seventh one, uh, what was the highest OSA layer that the hub and access point used? It's obviously a layer one. Coming to the next question, uh, did the hub or access point ever replicate a PDU that was rejected with a red cross? Yes, we have seen that. Uh, then coming to ninth one, when examining the PDU details tab, which MAC address appeared first? The source or the destination? Obviously, uh, it's, a, it's a destination. Uh, coming to the ninth question, uh, why would the MAC addresses appear uh, in this order? Uh, they mean that why this uh, destination uh, comes first. Obviously, a switch can forward a non-MAC address more quickly if the destination is listed first. Oh, it was a uh, tenth question. Right, so now we will move it to eleventh one. Was there a pattern to the MAC addressing in the simulation? Uh, obviously not. Uh, did the switches ever replicate a PDU that was uh, rejected with a red cross? No. Coming to the 13th question. Every time that the PDU was sent between the 10 network and the 172 network, there was a point where the MAC addresses suddenly changed. Yes. So where did that occur? Obviously, it's from the router. Coming to the 14th question, uh, which device uses the MAC addresses starting with 00D0? Uh, it's the MAC address of uh, rotor, starting MAC address of rotor. So here we can see that source MAC address 00D0. This uh, MAC address belongs to this rotor. Next one is uh, to what devices did the other MAC addresses belong? Obviously, uh, the sender and the receiver. Coming to the 16th one, did the sending and the receiving IPv4 addresses switch in any of the PDUs? No, it's not. Next one is, if you follow the reply to a ping, sometimes called a pong, uh, do the sending and receiving IPv4 addresses switch? Yes, it is. Coming to the question 18, uh, what is the pattern to the IPv4 addressing in this simulation? Obviously, uh, here, uh, not only in this uh, simulation, all the uh, router uh, required different IP networks. 
Coming to the uh, 19th question, uh, why do different IP networks need to be assigned to uh, different uh, ports of a router? Uh, we know the function of a router uh, is itself uh, is interconnected to different IP networks. Coming to the last question, if the simulation was configured with IPv6 instead of IPv4, what would be different? Obviously, uh, all these IPv4 address we have to change to IPv6, nothing else. Okay, it was uh, a packet tracer activity to understand and identify MAC and IP addresses. And in this packet tracer activity, uh, we did not do uh, any configurations, uh, but we gathered some PDU information. Well, dear friends, if not yet subscribe this channel, consider subscribing. And we will meet again with the next video. Thank you.